All right, everybody, welcome to my week 11 picks. Pittsburgh, the Thursday nighter tonight, plus three on the road to Cleveland. Cleveland, Kareem Hunt returns for his second game, I think, with the combination of Hunt and Chubb in the backfield. That should be enough for Cleveland to get the win over Pittsburgh. Although, since the Steelers have acquired Minka Fitzpatrick, he has eight... Eight of the 26 Pittsburgh turnovers, I believe, and he's only played seven games. He's had a fumble return, what, 40-plus yards for a touchdown last week or the week before. Had a big interception, INT pick six the, the week before that. So even though Pittsburgh's on a roll in one four straight, they're in that sixth seed in the AFC wildcard race, I believe. I, I think Cleveland getting Kareem Hunt, getting a little roll, being at home against Pittsburgh. I, I'm picking the Browns to win this game and cover the three points. Dallas at Detroit. These odds have not come out yet. I believe the Matthew Stafford situation is still to be determined. I will... I, I really like Dallas to win this game, but I, it depends on the spread, whether I'll take them on the spread or not. If this spread is anything bigger than three with, a help, with Matthew Stafford playing, I will be on Detroit on the spread, Dallas on the win. If this is a low spread, like a three-point spread or something, I'll be taking Dallas to double down. Ezekiel Elliott going against one of the worst rush Ds in, in the NFL. I, I think this could be a good bounce-back game for Zeke and the Cowboys after that loss to Minnesota last week. So watch out for the spread. Watch out for Matthew Stafford's situation. There's a lot going on in this game. So I'm just going to pick Dallas to win the game. And if that spread's more than three, I'm on Detroit. New Orleans, minus five and a half on the road to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, big underdogs, Saints embarrassed by the Falcons last week. I think Tampa Bay will do enough in this divisional matchup to keep it within the five and a half points, but I do think New Orleans will win the game. I think Drew Brees will find a way to get it done in the end, driving down the field to at least get that game-winning field goal or something. I don't expect a blow-up by any means, but I do think the Saints can bounce back in their second straight divisional game. Atlanta, plus five and a half. At Carolina, Carolina five and a half point favorites. Like I just mentioned, Atlanta came out and dominated the Saints last week. It was a big, big win for them. I, Matt Ryan's return uh, looked pretty good. But I like Carolina. I like Christian McCaffrey. I, I think the Falcons are going to have a letdown. I think that was not a one-off. I don't think they're a garbage team. But I don't think they'll be able to contain McCaffrey enough in this one. So I am rolling with Carolina to win the game and cover the spread. Jacksonville on the road at Indy. Jacksonville is three-point underdogs, yet they're 6-2 and two straight up and 7-0-1 oh, against the spread in their last eight meetings with Indy. The Jaguars are in their last 10 divisional games against AFC South foes. I believe they're 2-8, and eight, and their only two wins have come against the Colts. Uh, you got the return of Nick Foles. You got Jacoby Brissett, who should be back from injury. I thought he was going to return last week. That kind of screwed me in that pick. But, oh, well, it was a bad week overall with all the fucking underdogs that won. Um, I'm going to roll with a little more recent history. And I, I'm going to pick the Jaguars to be able to do enough to get this done. I'm going to pick them to straight up win this game on the road over Indy. Denver plus 10.5 over Minnesota. Minnesota 10 half point. Home favorites looking good with that win over Dallas on Sunday night. If Adam Thielen returns, they got Delvin Cook. Kirk Cousins is showing he can show up in primetime. I think he's 2-0 and this year in primetime games, which is just mind-blowing for Kirk Cousins and what we all think of him, or at least what I think of him anyways. Shouldn't speak for everybody else. I Denver coming off a bye. That rookie quarterback looked decent two weeks ago. I forget, his, forget the kid's name. I apologize. I like Minnesota to win this game, but I do not see a blue blowout. I think Denver's defense will and their offense will be able to do just enough to keep this game within reason. I don't like them double-digit point spreads, so I'm going to roll in Minnesota to win the game, Denver to cover the spread. Jets on the road at Washington. Washington is one and a half point home favorites. New York Jets, <clears throat> Washington Redskins, like... What does this game really mean? It means nothing except for the top drop pick or cl getting closer to the top drop pick. I will roll with the Jets. They beat the Giants last week and the New York, New York playing out of Jersey rivalry in the same stadium. I, I, I'll just pick the Jets because I have to pick a game in this. And since they're underdogs, I like them to straight up win. That means cover as well. Buffalo Bills on the road. Six point favorites on the road at Miami. Uh, Buffalo's lost 
two of their last three. Correct me if I'm wrong. I apologize if I am. I, I think the Bills can do enough to get this game. Miami, they might have won two now, but I still don't think they're for real. I still think they're going to be battling the Jets and, and teams like that for the top pick overall. I think the Bengals have that locked up, though, right now. Buffalo, I, I like them for a bounce back over Miami. I'll take the six points. I'll roll with it. I think the Bills win by a touchdown, 10 points, something around there. Houston, plus four on the road. Baltimore, Baltimore, four-point favorites at home. After routing the Patriots, uh, the Baltimore just on a roll. The under in the last four matchups between these two teams has hit, though. They seem to play a lower scoring, closer games with an average of like 40, 41. It's somewhere around the 40, 41, 42 points per game average total with the when these two teams have played in their last four matchups. So that might be a little trend you might want to look out for. Uh, not, I believe the over-under is set at like 50, 50 and a half or something right now. So that might be something. That's almost seven, eight, nine point difference. So look out for that. Two of the most exciting young quarterbacks in Deshaun Watson and Lamar Jackson facing off. You got the great, great running game Baltimore has, Ingram. That's, I think, why these two teams will stay a little lower scoring and, and maybe not be quite the, the 42-35 game that a lot of us might think or hope for with these two exciting quarterbacks. But I, I like Baltimore to win this game at home and cover the spread. But I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if Houston covered this one. I've been flip-flopping on this one a lot, but I'm so in love with Baltimore that I may be a little biased on this. So take that with a grain of salt when you listen to this. And don't hate for that. I, I'm just trying to be honest with you guys. So it, I am a, a little biased on a team or something. They're biased against a team. You and take that into account when you listen to this and make your bets. Especially if you disagree with my picks. You got to stick with your gut feeling. Remember, it's your betting, your money, your decision in the end. I'm only trying to help by throw out my advice, my picks, and a few stats that I've come up with. Next game. Arizona. Plus 10 on the road, San Francisco, minus 10. Finally lost on Monday night to Seattle. Arizona is 8-1 straight up and 6-3 and against the spread versus San Fran in their last nine meetings. Even the first game of the season, San Fran barely held on to win. Arizona is very competitive and for some reason they always step up and play hard against the 49ers. So I like San Fran to still win this game. I like them to bounce back and win. But I don't see this being more than a three or five point game. So 10 points is way too much for me in this matchup. San Fran to win, Arizona to cover. New England Patriots, three and a half point favorites on the road at Philadelphia. This is a very interesting game with the way these two teams have played. The Eagles have been missing O-linemen, D-linemen. They've only played one or two games with all three of their starting cornerbacks. The Patriots have played such a weak schedule, it's so hard to judge them. Even before Baltimore went off and ran all over them before their bye week last week, New England Patriots were still giving up four and a half yards per rush on the ground, which is atrocious run defense. So if Howard and Sanders can get off and the Eagles can dominate this game on the ground, they could find a way to straight up win. I'm not going to pick a winner on this game, but I do think this is a field goal game, and I, I'm going to pick... Philly to cover the spread because three and a half. I don't see either of these teams beating the other by more than three. I think it's going to be a back and forth game like the Super Bowl was, but a lot lower scoring. I see this score being more like a 27, 24, 24, 21, 20, 28, 27, like some some weird number in the 20s for each team stand just under that 50 point over under or 51. I forget what the over under is in this one. It, it could have went up a bit as well. So Philly to cover the spread in this one. These two teams are pretty evenly matched. Both teams are 14-4 and four after their bye week, which is second best record because Baltimore pulled off their win after their bye this year to go 15-4 and four now. They are the best team after a bye week in recent history. Uh, Philly and New England, they're 8-6. and six. New England has an 8-6 and six winning record over the Eagles all time, including... I believe New England's won both games at the link since Philly moved there from the old vet. So New England has a slight edge. So maybe New England wins by three in this game. That's kind of how I see it breaking down. Maybe a one to three point New England victory over Philly. But if Philly's ground game gets going, it wouldn't surprise me if they pulled the upset either. Cincinnati. 
plus 10.5 at Oakland. Oakland minus 10.5 point favorites at home. Josh Jacobs, that kid is just so fucking incredible. That rookie running back they got out there is ripping it up. He should shred the 32nd ranked run D that Cincinnati holds. Cincinnati's 0-9, could be 0-10 after this one. I thoroughly expect it. But with, with the way that Oakland likes to attack on the ground... That just doesn't lead me to believe there's going to be a ton of points so that you're going to win by a real wide margin. So with the ground game in consideration, I like Oakland to win this game by about a touchdown. Cincinnati to cover the spread. Chicago Bears plus 6.5 at the LA Rams. LA Rams 6.5 point home favorites. But their old line is beat up. Look at the pressure that's been getting to Goff the last week or two. He could spend a lot of time on his back with this Bears D. Their offense finally clicked a little bit, albeit against Detroit and their horrid pass defense, especially the way Darius Slay's unhappy in Detroit. Um, I think Chicago's D could get to Goff in this game, and I, I think you could see an upset on the road here by the Bears. I'm definitely taking the Bears to cover the spread. I will pick LA Rams to win the game, but I, I think this is a very, very close matchup because that Bears D could put them in very, very generous field position to get Trubisky some easy points or at least some easy field goals for that horrid Bears offense. I, I'm picking the Bears in the spread, Rams to win the game slightly, but I like Chicago as an upset bet, and I will be putting a couple bucks on Arizona and Chicago as upset bets this week. Don't know if they're going to happen. That's why I'm not putting them out there to you guys. But I will let you know I will be putting a couple bucks on them. Uh, Kansas City three and a half point road favorites at the LA Chargers. Which isn't really a home game. But do the Chargers have any home games? Because they have no home fans. And their crowds seem to be dominated by the visiting teams anyways. I believe this game, if I remember right, is being played in Mexico. Hopefully it's not that bullshit like that field looked last year. Um, I think Kansas City bounces back. The Chargers may have the fifth-ranked pass defense, but I like Mahomes. I like the way the Kansas City offense rolls. I think there's too many weapons on there for the Chargers to stop. And I don't think Phillip Rivers can do enough on offense to catch up or keep up with Mahomes and the Chiefs. So I'm going to pick Chiefs to win the game outright and cover this three-and-a-half-point spread. That's my Week 11 picks. Peace.